Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the official study guide, version 7, 2025. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together, you and I. Today is our lesson number 10. We are on page number 101 and we're going to pick up from problem number 3. There are three problems there, 3, 4 and 5. That's what we're going to do right now. Problem number 3, as you can see already, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We're being asked, we are being asked to arrange these four quantities in decreasing order. What does decreasing order mean? Decreasing order means from from greatest to the smallest. From greatest to smallest. For example, if we were asked to compare 3, 9, 5 and 13 and if we were asked to arrange them in decreasing order, we start from the biggest one and we keep on decreasing 9, 5 and 3. That's decreasing order. If we were asked to do that in increasing order, then we start from the smallest one, obviously. The problem here is that, that was a simple problem. That was a those, those four numbers were positive numbers. That was a very straightforward, simple problem. Problem here is that, these four quantities that we have, other than the one over there, we have three quantities, actually two of them, two negatives and two positives. So we have to arrange the negatives and positives together to figure out which one is the greatest one, which is the smallest one. Let's see what we can do. When you're dealing with negative and positive number and when you have to compare them, it always makes it easier to put them on a number line. Visualize them. Having a visual aid makes a big difference. Let's take a look at it. So here is our zero. Anything that goes to the left of zero is negative. And as you move to the left, the numbers get smaller. As we move to the right, the numbers get smaller large, larger, you already know that. Let's begin. Negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4 is going to be way over here. Then we have a point 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Point 4, this is 1. Point 4 is somewhere here. Point 4 is about halfway between 0 and 1. Because point 5 is exactly halfway. Then we have a 4 and 1 fifth. Don't worry about the one-fifth part. The fact remains that four and one-fifth, whatever it is, is going to be somewhere here. Do you understand? And then we have a negative 0 0.04. 0 0.04, whether it's positive or negative, I hope you are able to see that the quantity of 0 0.04 is very close to zero. Except here, it is negative, so it goes on the negative side a little bit. That's all. We're done. This guy is the smallest one. And this guy is the largest one. And since we are being asked to arrange them in a decreasing order, a decreasing order means we start from this guy, 4 and 1 fifth, and we just go in order. We just pick up as we move along. So we took care of this guy here. Now there is this guy, which is 0.4, right there. Then the next guy that comes in, which is, as you see, I have nothing there, but it's something to the left of 0, something very close to 0, that was this guy. And finally, a negative 4. There we go. We have done so. We have arranged them from the greatest to the smallest. In decreasing order, as they said. Let's take a look at the next one. In the next one, they are asking us to arrange the numbers in increasing order. Increasing order means we're going to start with the smallest one and work our way up all the way to the largest one. And here are the quantities. We have 3 eighths. We have 3 quarter. We have 11 sixteenth. And we have 1, one half. Now I'm going to pause here for a second.
I'm going to pause here for a second to give you a small a little pep talk. This is a course, just like any course, if you go to a lecture, lecture number 10, the teacher assumes that you did attend the last nine lectures and you understood the material from it, you study it. When you're watching video number 10, I assume that everything that we went through in the first nine video, you have watched those. And if you have not, you cannot watch them randomly, you have to watch them in order. If you did watch them in order, then you would know that yesterday, just yesterday on day number nine, day number nine, we learned the concept of LCD, L, least common denominator, least common denominator. Least common denominator means exactly what it says. What it means is that when you're comparing fractions, you cannot compare the fractions as they exist right now. They have to have common denominator, and it helps to have the denominator that you, the, the common denominator that you're looking for. It helps if you keep the denominator as small as possible. Hence, the least part, least common denominator. What is the common denominator here? Com as opposed to what we did yesterday, where the, all the denominators were all different. Here is actually very straightforward. We have first of all, they're all even numbers, and we have four, eight, and a four, and a sixteen, and a two. Just pick the biggest one. And that's going to be the least common denominator, 16. We could use 160 as a common denominator. We could use 16 million as a common denominator. And we could use 16 billion as a common denominator. But it will serve no purpose. The smallest number that we can think of, which happens to be a multiple of 8 and a 4 and a 16 and a 2, is right here. Somehow we have to make all of these 16. And that's called the least common denominator. Now the mistake I made is that I wrote them too close to each other. Let's rewrite them. 3 8, 3 quarter, 11 16. Let's rewrite them. So we have 3 8. I'm trying to make sure that I have enough room to do what we need to do. 3 quarter, 11 16. And finally, one half. 16 is the smallest number that happens to be a nice multiple of 2 and 16 and 4 and 8. So we have to make all of this denominator 16. How can we convert 8 into a 16? But it's very straightforward. Multiply 8 by 2. There you go, now it's 16. Since you multiply the bottom by 2, you must multiply the bottom top by 2. In other words, 3 8 is same as 6 16. So that is done. How do you convert 4 into a 16? Very simple. Multiply top and bottom by 4 over 4. And now we have 3 times 4 is 12 over 16. In other words, if you were to take 12 over 16 and reduce it, you'll end up with 3 quarters. What about 11 over 16? 11 over 16, we don't have to do anything because it's already 16. How do we convert 2 into a 16? Oh, very simple. Take it, take the, take the fraction, multiply top and bottom by 8. So now we end up with 1 times 8, which is 8, and 2 times 8, which is 16. And you can clearly see that 8 divided by 16, if you reduce it, 8 divided by 2, 16 is half. It's 1 over 2. Divide top and bottom by 8. It's a multiplying top and bottom. If you divide top and bottom by 8, you'll end up with where we started, 1 half. Now they all have 16. Since they all have common denominator, since they all have common denominator, the denominator at this point ceases to play a role when we try to compare which one is the greatest and which one is the smallest. We no, we no longer have to look at the denominator because they are all the same. They're asking us to compare in increasing order, which means we have to start from the smallest. The smallest one is this guy right here. This guy right here, where did it come from? That came from 3 8. So this is the smallest to the largest. Smallest is 3, 6 is the smallest, 6, 12, 11, 8, 6 is the smallest, 6, 8, 6, 16 came from this guy, 3, 8. Then we're going to have the next one, so we have a 6, the next one is 8, where did this 8 come from? That came from half. Then we have a 11, and where did 11 come from? 11, 16 came from 11, 16, so it's 11, 16. Finally, we have 12, 16, 
that came from three quarters. There we go, we have done so. We have arranged them from the smallest to the largest in increasing order. We were asked to arrange them in increasing order, we have done so. The smallest one is 3 8, then we have a half, 11 16, and 3 quarter. That was number, that was question number 4 actually, not 3. A bit too late to arrange, change that, but that's what that was. Let's do number 5. In number 5 also they are asking us to arrange them in increasing order. The quantity that are given to us, they are asking us to arrange them in. Oh, blast it, it's decreasing order. You have to pay attention to it. Decreasing order means we have to start with the largest one and keep going down until we get to the smallest one. Except the problem is in number 5 we are being asked to compare four quantities. They all happen to be bloody negative. Negatives. Let's take a look at it. We have no choice, bloody or not, we have to take tackle them. Negative one and three fifth. Negative one point five. Negative one point eight. Negative one and three quarter. Let's see what we can do. Let's play a little trick. Okay. Let's play a little trick. Just listen to what I have to say. For the time being, don't worry about this negative one. I want you to concentrate on these quantities. 3 fifth, 0 0.15, 0 0.8, and 3 quarter. And see what we can do here. And think of this in terms of a dollar. Think of this in terms of a dollar. Can you tell me how many cents is 3, 3 fifth of a dollar? A one fifth of a dollar is twenty cents. Three fifth will make a sixty cents. Three fifth is sixty. That's, as I said a little while ago, you have to know your tenths, you have to know your fifth, you have to know your third, and so on and so forth. You have to know your quarters. Three fifth. Let's take a very quick look at here. Three fifth here. One fifth. One fifth. If you were to multiply top and bottom by two, you will end up with two tenth, and two tenth is point two which is 20 cents. A fifth of a dollar, think, think in terms of money if it helps you. A fifth of a dollar is 20 cents. Therefore, three-fifths of a dollar is simply 60 cents. So that part is done. 0.45, that's just 45 cents. 0.8, let's take a look at 0.8. When it's written like this, 0.8, even though this zero is missing, you have to understand that there is a zero here. Point 0.8 of a dollar, in other words, eight, eight tenth of a dollar is 80 cents. And finally, what do you suppose three quarter of a dollar is? How much money would you have if you have three quarters? A quarter is a 25 cents, three quarters is 75 cents. Very straightforward. That's what three quarters means. If I, if I tell you that I need three quarters, I'm asking you for 75 cents. Give me three quarters. 75 cents. There you go. Now, let's arrange them. Now, here's the tricky part. Because they are all negative numbers, ordinarily, ordinarily, 80 would have been the biggest one, then the 75, then the 60, then the 45. But because they are negative numbers, because, for example, for example, 7 is greater than 7 is not greater than 8. Jesus. 7 is greater than 5. But negative 7, negative 7 is less than negative 5. Because negative 7, because negative 7 appears farther left to the 0. So since they are negative, since they are negative, what happens to be the largest one is actually the smallest one because they all have negative in front of them. What were the decreasing order? Since they are asking us to arrange them in decreasing order, we have to start with the largest one. Ordinarily, had they been positive, 80 is the largest one, 45 is the smallest one, but, but because they are negative, 45 is the largest one, negative 45, and negative 45 came from where? Negative 45 came from here, there you go, that's the largest one, negative 1.45. Then we have 60, 60 came from where? 60 came from 
right there, 3 fifths, negative 1 and 3 fifths. Then we have 75, 75 came from where? 75 came from there, negative 3 quarters, negative 1 and 3 quarters. And finally, we have 80, 80 came from where? 80 came from here, negative 0.18. And now they are arranged in a decreasing order. This guy is the largest one. This is the smallest one. That's it. Now if, I, if it helps you, I'm going to present them, if it helps you, I'm going to present them a little bit different way on the number line so you can visualize it. Here we go. I'm going to, we need the room so I need to erase all of this thing. I'm going to present to you these quantities these quantities on a number line so you can visualize them. A number line, let's put a zero way up here, here's a negative one and here's a negative two. This is negative one half. This is the largest one. Negative one half is negative 1.5. So this is, let's call this A. This is your A. Then we have 3 fifths which is 60. This is 1.5, negative 1.5. This is negative 1.6. This is B. Negative 1.37, uh, negative 1.75, 1 and 3 quarter, and then 1 eighth. So that's going to be, this is going to be C. And finally the D. The one that is closest to negative 1, the one that is closest to negative 1 is the largest one, which is this guy, negative 1.45. A. And the smallest one is the one, the smallest one is the one that is closest to negative 2. The largest one is the one that is closest to negative 1, which is negative 1.5, negative 4.5. I don't know if I actually helped you, or perhaps I simply turned, it in, turned this into a freak show. I do not know. But that's what I have. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.